to understand how to migrate uh, devices from uh, legacy Helium console to a Chipstark Helium console. As a reminder, you have a, a video for having a tour in inside the Chipstark uh, Helium uh, console. Uh, you can watch this video. This one is uh, focusing on the way you are going to migrate uh, your devices. The Helium Chipstark uh, console has a wizard to allow you to do this migration in the more simple way as possible. It works well for most of the simple configuration, uh, but can require some uh, manual operation uh, for some more complex things. We're gonna see that in detail. One important thing is when you migrate your device, if you migrate it within the same OUI, so as an example, from console.helium-iot.eu to a console.helium-iot.xyz, which I own for both, you don't need to restart, to rejoin your device. But if you migrate from different UI, as an example, from console.helium.com to console.helium-iot.xyz, in this case, your device will have to rejoin which can be something automatic or can require to restart the device. It depends on the device itself. Now, uh, let's see what is happening uh, when we want to do this migration. So here you see a uh, legacy console environment. It's this 91 demo environment, okay? There is four devices on this uh, environment and these devices have a different configuration we can see on the floor. Demo 1 is not connected, it does not have any flow. Demo 2 has a simple integration on HTTP and uh, the two others, Demo 3 and 4, are attached to a label named Demo using a decoder and having an integration. We are going to migrate these different devices with different steps uh, of complexity, starting by the more simple to the most advanced. Now in helium-iot.xyz, we have created an account and uh, we have a tenant which is named demo here and uh, this uh, tenant have a menu, so you have the uh, user menu on the top right and the user menu have different entry and one of the entry is migrate from legacy. This is the one you are going to use for doing the migration. Here you arrive in a wizard that will drive you into uh, the migration process. The first step is to get an API key from the legacy console this IPL key will uh, allow you to get the information from the legacy console. Uh, here are the steps which are described for getting this. We are going to do it uh, live. So I'm going back in the legacy console. So that's the legacy console. You see the devices. I go to the burger menu and my account. And in my account, I can create an API key. I will give a name to this API key, it's migration. We select a role, there is only one which is administrator, and we create a key. What is important is that this key is going to be printed a single time here, as you can see on the screen. So you copy this uh, API key, and once it's done, you click on I have copied my new API key. The API key is not ready for being used. As you see, it's not activated. And for activating it, you need to go to your email where you should have received an email for activating the API key. So you click on activate your API key. It's loading. And once this is done, the status here and activated is now true and we are ready to start the migration. So now we can go on helium 
iot-iot.xyz we were in the wizard and in the wizard we can use our API key here so I can copy my API key and we are going to select the source where we want to get the device so it can be the foundation console, the VIP, testnet which is uh, not used uh, by uh, regular customer and eventually if you have another uh, legacy console you can directly enter uh, the uh, address of it. Here for the demo uh, we use heliumiot.u and so we can next connect to uh, this. By connecting to this uh, we get some information. We see that we are four devices. Uh, we have two labels but in fact here is a label we have a demo and we have no label so no label is a label <laughs> um, and we see that we have four active device we can live migrate them it's because uh, we are between helium-iot.eu and helium-iot.xyz so the same OUI so they are, they are live migrable if you see zero it means that you cannot do live and you have to rejoin the device and we have two integration. So uh, to get started, I will start by migrating device uh, number one, which is without label. Uh, so I will select this. And so we have two devices without label. Uh, we will select it uh, later. Uh, now we can select an integration. In this case of this device, uh, which is device one, uh, as we can see, here we have demo one, and if we take a look on the flow, you have no label, and if we take a look on the flow, you have no integration. So that's a simple case. I have no integration. I can skip this part, and I have no function. So I can skip this part by selecting none. So now uh, we have to set up Chipstock. So it proposed to uh, select a tenant. I only have a tenant named Demo, so it's that uh, tenant. Uh, here we are in a particular situation where as it is a demo, none of the device exists really and have communicated previously. Uh, otherwise, uh, you would have seen uh, the region of each of your devices. So selecting tenant Demo, the system is now proposing to create the device profile so we are going to create OTAA profile for uh, our devices if we had region identified uh, the color would be uh, the light blue uh, as we have no region identified it's other uh, color, color. Uh, and so I will select where are my devices. So let's take where in Europe, my device is in Europe. So I can create the device profile automatically for that device. I can create multiple of them if I have a need for this. I can create US 915, for example, for that device. Now, um, we don't have the same organization of devices between uh, legacy console and chipstock. Uh, we have organization in uh, um, uh, legacy console, which is basically corresponding to tenants uh, for a cheap stock environment. And uh, for the legacy console, we had this label to group uh, certain devices with the uh, uh, same behavior, I would say. And this concept is uh, named application in, uh, in cheap stock. So we have to create an application and you need to have an application, which is a difference. Uh, we had a no label uh, previously in, uh, in legacy console here. You need to create an application. So we create an application. I will call it, for example, device one. Uh, but remember that it's a group of devices in application. Here it's just because I have only one device. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a simple as this. So let's take it application one. But the application could be, I don't know, uh, water monitoring sensor or thing like this. So we create an application, we select this application, and next we can reach the migration step. So here we see all the devices without any label, and uh, we have the information of the device UI and uh, the selection of the region. In your situation, your devices are active the region may be preset 
according to the device last transmission region. Here it's not the case, I have to set up by myself. In any case, it's good to verify that the region is the right one corresponding to where your device is. Automatically, it gets uh, your uh, um, device tip. With the menu here, you can make a global selection for all the device, eventually all the device that has been selected. Okay, mm, sorry, all the devices. <laughs> uh, I think it's here you can, uh, yeah, no, it's all the devices. Sorry for this. Uh, so you make a section for uh, all the devices uh, to make it uh, simple. Uh, you can filter here if you don't want uh, to uh, apply to all the, the existing device, but uh, on a sub, uh, sub part of the devices, like if I put one, I can apply for all that having a one to uh, a AU915. And so if I remove the fighter, uh, you see uh, I have only my section that be, that's been impacted. Okay, so I have my demo one, it's a U868, it's a, a U868 um, device tip here. I have my application here, it's application one. So here we can see that uh, <coughs> demo one is ready for migration. Uh, I'm going to select this device I want to migrate and then I will click on play button. And when you get a green check, it means that the device has been migrated. We can check this now into Chipstalk looking at uh, all devices. We can go on device profile. We see that the two device profile we have uh, uh, been selected has been created. We can go on application. We see our application one and in application one, we see a device uh, that has been created, demo one. Uh, so that's a simple uh, way to do uh, migration. If we check in the console and take a look to all device, uh, we can see that the device demo one has been deactivated. So basically, the device now will switch from uh, the legacy console to the chip start console. In case you had a problem during the migration, something not working, you can eventually delete a device here. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to enter the device, you can delete the device and you can reactivate the device on the legacy console. So rollback is possible. When everything is working, you can delete your device if you want on the legacy console. So that's for the simple case of the uh, migration. I will make another video to present you the other uh, scenario of migration with uh, integration and uh, with a uh, um, function to extract the data from the payload.